as this afternoon a berth in the Sweet 16 is on the line as the Fighting Tigers of LSU take on Middle Tennessee. Gets it free throw line Mora, drives the lane wide open, layup oh, yeah. is good. Numbers not good, she's zigzagging through traffic, she's to the hole, layup is good. What does numbers mean to Flage Johnson in transition? Nothing. He fires it left side, Poa open for three for Poa, it's good. LSU answers. And it's going to be up and in. Jones and Reese right there. Moro spins on the baseline, dumps it down to Reese, layup, good, good and time. counts and a foul. Out to Poa, left side, Williams, three ball in the air, good! Hey, great ball movement. There's two. Shoot it, shoot it. There's one at the buzzer, Flaugé. Let's made go! It. She made it What awareness, what awareness by Flaugé Johnson. And LSU, after an 83-56 win over Middle Tennessee, is headed back to the Sweet 16 for the second straight year. And we say happy Tuesday morning, everybody. Buddy Sanji in the house, gone solo this week with Tiger's Roar. We have a lot to talk about. Our co-host, Jonathan Poche, uh, will be back with us next time, taking care of some family business, as always. We hope that all of you are doing well. And folks, if you don't know how to multitask, you were in trouble this weekend. All you ladies, don't get mad at your better half, your other half, whatever you call the old man. We have been watching a variety of uh, ball, whether it be basketball, baseball, football, spring practice. We've got it all for you. You saw the opening LSU prevails over Middle Tennessee State, and uh, the Tigers now move on to play UCLA in, uh, of course, um, uh, Albany 2 Regional. That game will start Saturday at noon against UCLA. UCLA took care of business last night against Creighton. That was a very close game. They invariably win by 10. Iowa also uh, take care of business as uh, they were pushed a little bit by West Virginia. They advanced, so now here it is, folks, uh, the Lady Tigers. And I got to start off by talking about, uh, as we said, multitasking. LSU baseball at 2 o'clock, women's basketball at 2 o'clock. If you weren't going back and forth, I don't know what you were doing, but invariably, We've got some problems on baseball. This is the second consecutive Sunday. They have been run ruled 15 to five against Mississippi State on the, on the road in this past Sunday after we watched the uh, women's basketball uh, team advance to go to the Sweet 16 against the aforementioned UCLA Bruins. Uh, lo and behold, they get run ruled again at, uh, on Sunday, 12 to two. So. Uh, we'll get into all of that. We've got some snippets and tidbits on spring football. Brian Kelly in year three. And uh, obviously, not only has it been the talk of uh, local, but it has been national talk with Kim Mulkey. And um, uh, when we get ready to show you in a little bit, um, uh, her response to the Washington Post, they've got a hit piece that's coming out on Coach Mulkey. She was adamant about that thing. We'll get into all of that. And uh, as always, we want to hope that you and yours bring in. It is Holy Week for you practicing Catholics, of course. So uh, we hope that all of you will have a safe and very blessed Easter this weekend with you and your family. You know, Mike Scarborough, who we do the shows on uh, Wednesday with, um, kind of got into the women's basketball when Kim Mulkey arrived, and the rest is history. Little did we know that Kim and her staff would bring LSU a natty in year two, and I was trying to recollect this earlier this week. I only remember one LSU team that was able to go back-to-back, -back. and I'm no disrespect to Dennis Shaver or uh, Pat Henry in their heydays of LSU track when they would win back-to-back-to-back, but baseball went back to back 96, 97. Uh, these two teams that won natties last year, the women's basketball and of course baseball, it's always tougher to repeat. They're not defending because they're not the same team. They are reigning national champions. And uh, if you look at the Lady Tigers, it has been a sold out ticket. In fact, 
Uh, what a great crowd. Let's give my buddy Chris Gee out a shout out today. He actually got into the student section and uh, we were watching on TV. Big thanks to AT for once again helping out those grandkids getting into the Pete Maverick Assembly Center. And if you were there, you know what we're talking about. The PMAC was loud, it was rocking, it was once again the Death Dome. What an atmosphere. Uh, early on, Middle Tennessee State made a little bit of a run. Uh, Angel looked a little off, the Tigers looked a little sluggish. They were down at halftime and then came back and made an incredible run in the third quarter. And, uh, you know, the Middle Tennessee coach, who's a Hall of Famer, Incel, uh, was not happy with the disparity of uh, foul shots for LSU versus uh, Middle Tennessee State. But when you're watching these games and you're pulling for LSU and you want to see what the Lady Tigers are going to do, you, you never think that uh, they get the short, uh, the good end of the, the refereeing. As we know, uh, look, uh, you got to shoot foul shots. And uh, in the second half, they shot a lot of foul shots, 37 uh, to 9 with LSU. And once again, that's one of the great things that they have been able to do. Uh, we all know that uh, this team is a different team. Uh, Samaya Smith got hurt early in the year. Kateri Poole got booted off. So the bench is not as deep as you had last year. Don't forget Jasmine Carson came in here and made seven three balls in the national championship game against Iowa. Speaking of Iowa, Caitlin Clark continuing to break all the records. She had another big game last night, 32 points. But watching those uh, ladies from Iowa, they're the one seed. Watching UCLA uh, last night, the two seed. LSU, the three seed. Quite frankly, I think it's without a doubt the toughest bracket in the women's tournament. And uh, now, uh, as we go to the Albany 2 Regional this weekend, starting on Saturday, Iowa is beatable. UCLA is beatable. LSU can get to the Final Four, but I think it is common sense when you talk about the things that they've got to do. They score the basketball relatively easy, but one of the things that they will have to concentrate is dribble drive penetration and not letting those guards get down low where they can dish it off or make those scoop shots and layups. And so you got to stay out of foul trouble. You got to pass the ball around. I think that as we saw in the first game against Rice, and even with a little bit of the opening game, uh, opening half against Middle Tennessee State, maybe not as much team ball. Uh, you got to give Bob Starkey and uh, Kim Mulkey and her staff a lot of credit. They make great adjustments at halftime. But one of the things that was a big story this past weekend was on Saturday when uh, Kim Mulkey addressed the, uh, the media on this hit piece. So what we're going to do is uh, uh, our first tape of the day is let you hear what Coach Mulkey had to say. Uh, once again, the timing of this is suspect. By the way, in case you've not heard, the writer who is putting this together is a South Carolina grad, and uh, as we know, uh, it's uh, always a method to the badness with uh, uh, social media and all the craziness uh, that comes your way. But let's go ahead and roll that first tape. Here's Kim Mulkey. If you hadn't seen it, uh, it'll get your blood roll of Marlon. And uh, one thing about and the Coach Mulkey, he has gone she to knows. try and put a hit piece together. This reporter has been working on a story about me for two years. After two years of trying to get me to sit with him for an interview, he contacts LSU on Tuesday as we were getting ready for the first round game of this tournament with more than a dozen questions, demanding a response by Thursday, right before we're scheduled to tip off. Are you kidding me? This was a ridiculous deadline that LSU and I could not possibly meet, and the reporter knew it. It was just an attempt to prevent me from commenting and an attempt to distract us from this tournament. It ain't going to work, buddy. Unfortunately, 
This is part of a pattern that goes back years. I told this reporter two years ago that I didn't appreciate the hit job he wrote on Brian Kelly. And that's why I wasn't going to do an interview with him. After that, the reporter called two former college coaches of mine and left multiple messages that he was with me in Baton Rouge to get them to call him back. Trying to trick these coaches into believing that I was working with the Washington Post on a story. When my former coaches spoke to him and found out that I wasn't talking with the reporter, they were just distraught and they felt completely misled. Former players have told me that the Washington Post has contacted them and offered to let them be anonymous in a story if they'll say negative things about me. The Washington Post has called former disgruntled players to get negative quotes to include in their story. They're ignoring the 40 plus years of positive stories that, that people or they have heard from people about me. But you see, reporters who give a megaphone to a one-sided embellished version of things aren't trying to tell the truth. They're trying to sell newspapers and feed the click machine. This is exactly why people don't trust journalists and the media anymore. It's these kinds of sleazy tactics and hatchet jobs that people are just tired of. I'm fed up and I'm not gonna let the Washington Post attack this university, this awesome team of young women I have, or me without a fight. I've hired the best defamation law firm in the country and I will sue the Washington Post if they publish a false story about me. Not many people are in a position to hold these kind of journalists accountable, but I am, and I'll do it. That's all I'm gonna say about this right now, and now I'm going to get back to talking about my basketball team and winning this game tomorrow. That press conference uh, sponsored in part by Manda Fine Meats, where flavor and spice and Kim Mulkey really do say it all. A little spicy and uh, talking to A.T. and Marty and the folks uh, here in the studio. We hope all of you are doing well on this March the 26th. And uh, folks, uh, listen, uh, great coaches uh, like A.T. and I were talking during the break use the media to get the message out. And I really think she wanted to take the pressure off of her team, put it on her back. And uh, now if they play the second half, uh, and, and if they play uh, that way consistently, I didn't think two weeks ago that this team had the depth to get to the Final Four, but watching Iowa closely last night, watching UCLA, they've got a couple of bigs, Got an excellent point guard that they will have to stop with dribble drive penetration. But don't sell your Lady Tigers short. She is the female version of Nick Saban, except about 10 years younger. And uh, when she gets fired up, it's like the old E. Hep Hutton commercial. When Kim Mulkey talks, people listen. And uh, I don't know if that hit, hit piece is going to come out this week or whatever. But um, it has given them an extra shot of adrenaline. Quick time out. We come back and uh, we'll let you hear from Flaugé Johnson. Big foe. She's got a new single out. Ain't my, ain't my, uh, what is it? Ain't my fault or whatever. And uh, Angel Reese, she's so styling. It's unbelievable. If you've been watching the games, she's got a one-on-one -on -one now with Canes. Uh, just like Jaden Daniels had. Gordon McKernan always supporting with NIL. And then, of course, Kim Mulkey recapping the win over Middle Tennessee. Back on a Tuesday afternoon right here on Tiger's Roar with Buddy Sanji.
Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. Visit Treads and Care Tire Company's new location on Hooper Road in Central. Locally owned for over 50 years, Treads and Care is known for quality automotive repair and top-notch customer service. I'd like to invite you to come out and see us at our new location in Central. Right now, during the season of inspiration at Team Mazda, get 1.9% financing for 60 months on a new Mazda CX-5, or get 0.9% financing on the all-new 24 Mazda CX-90. Save thousands on over 150 new Mazdas now on sale at Team Mazda. You can't smell it, but you can almost taste it. And whether it's for a family get-together or a game day feast, having Manda in the mix always sounds good. For three generations, their quality meats and original seasonings have made Manda a Louisiana legend and made their family sausage Louisiana's family sausage. Manda Fine Meats. The flavor says it all. hitting one out. We will get to baseball. We have uh, a um, variety of topics. We're starting off today. Buddy Sanji in the house here solo. JP will be back with us the next time we do Tigers Roar. Hope all of you are doing well. And uh, once again, folks, uh, I got to tell you, watching the women this year, South Carolina, if they don't win it all this year, it will be one of the biggest choke jobs ever. They are that good. They are that deep. They are that long and talented. They are blowing people out by 30 and 40 points. But you don't worry about Carolina because if LSU gets all the way to the final game, I'm assuming that it would be South Carolina. But LSU's got work to do. Uh, started sluggishly, as we know, in that uh, game on uh, uh, Friday afternoon at 3 o'clock at 24 turnovers. Only had one in the second half and seven for the game against Middle Tennessee State. Here we give you a little taste of uh, Flarge Johnson. She is a rapper. She is multi-talented. She is a, uh, a young lady that everybody loves because she's got a lot of heart and soul. You'll hear her, uh, some of the things. She's become a leader, really improves as a sophomore. How good has Anissa Morrow been coming over from DePaul as a grad transfer? Haley Van Lip. the good news, of course, is that uh, last tier Poa is back and healthy, clear concussion protocol. So when Van Lift slides over to shoot uh, from the two guard spot, Poa will be playing uh, the uh, point guard. And uh, Poa did hit uh, a big three, and she's a great free throw shooter. We know Angel Reese 
is um, uh, going to have a decision. Both her and Haley will have decisions after the end of the year. Do they come back for another year or do they go to the NBA and move on? And, of course, uh, as we know, uh, these uh, ladies are well-versed in media relations. We give you a little taste of the post-game press conference. After we come back on that, we'll wrap up women's basketball talk, get into a little spring football talk, and save baseball for lap when I have to put the sunglasses on. Here's Flage, Angel, and Coach Kim Mulkey after the Middle Tennessee State win in a big atmosphere. How loud was that crowd? I had people telling me their ears were hurting two hours after the game. It was that loud, that passionate. Everybody brought it to the table. Here are the girls in the post game. I don't think y'all had a steal in the first half and y'all come out, I think, four steals in the first four minutes. Just what changed defensively for y'all and what allowed y'all to go in that run? Uh, Haley, um, you know, I told Haley we got to cut the head off the snake, you know what I'm saying? And she really took that challenge on because they, they, they point guard. She's little, but she's mighty, and she makes things happen for them, and she breaks down defenses. So Haley gave us the opportunity to be able to get in some passing lanes for the bigs to be able to work their mojo. So that's all Haley Van Liff right there. Bryce Coon, 24-7 Sports. Angel, can you just kind of talk about Flage and – I mean, I know you've talked about this all season, but just her ability to kind of not only ignite the crowd, but the bench and the team as well. Obviously a team effort, but just the job that she did today. Yeah, it comes from it, it comes from the defensive end. I don't know if this is the one. Yeah. It comes from the defensive end. Um, I think she's done a great job to transition from her freshman to sophomore year and taking that on. She usually guards the best player on the team. I mean, tonight the point guard was that. But she took accountability and just being able to get down and give us a lot of energy. She told us, like I said, like she said in the locker room, cut the head off the snake. And I was the point guard. So just being able to have a leadership from a sophomore when I might not be having my best game or Haley may not be having our best game, having also leadership from our younger players is great. Corey Diaz with the USA Today Sports Network. Angel for you. Um, I think it was 421 in the third quarter. Flage was at the free throw line, and, and I saw Kim yell to get your attention, and she just mouthed to you, I need you. Just just that moment, what, what did you perceive the message to be, and how did you sort of implement that for the remainder of the game? Yeah, I didn't want to let my team down. Um, I think we were down at that point. And of course, when anybody tells me that they need me, I want to be there and do whatever it takes to win. And I had another off night scoring, but I was just doing whatever it could to just help the team, getting steals, getting pass lanes, help my point guard. And uh, like I said, I don't want to let my team down. I didn't want this to be my last game being here in the PMAC. So I just did whatever it takes to win. And me and Coach have that kind of relationship where she can get on me and tell me like, and talk to me like, I need you and give me that encouragement that I need. Uh, it's for both girls, but we'll Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV inventors. We'll start with Angel. Just the idea of this being a 40-minute game and understanding that, you know, Coach talked about it yesterday, not exactly the, the deepest benches on either side. So if you get them in foul trouble, you mm -hmm. guys could get, you know, the outcome you wanted. Yeah, we knew Middle, Te Middle Tennessee was, was going to be a team that played for 40 minutes. We saw when they played Louisville and they were, what, down 18 and came back and won that game. Mm -hmm. So we knew we were going to have to fight. Everybody was going to have to suck it up and get down and just do whatever it takes to win. I think we did that. We had a lot of help also from the bench and being able to have Poa sub in and start that second half and mm -hmm. Haley still come in. It was the different rotations that we have. And like I said, you never know whose game, whose night it's going to be. So being able to have players to step up off the bench was something that was key for us tonight and then get them in foul trouble. Yeah, um, same. Um, we just had energy. I mean, like, the ener I, I feel like everybody felt that shift in the energy going into halftime. I was like, my stomach was bubbling. I said, I ain't going home. I ain't got nothing to do, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> like, until the summer. So, uh-uh, I, I want to be in New York. Simple. This is Blake Spadar from WNBA Swish. Uh, Y'all were, uh, were down 41-32 to uh, – in the middle of the th uh, start of the f uh, third quarter, and then y'all hit them with a blitz. What exactly happened, and how did y'all flip the switch? Defense. Yeah, defense. We got that still. Energy. That defense, that defense, the defense. Offensively, it wasn't really an issue. Um, it hasn't been an issue for us because we know we can score the ball. But defense, number four, I told her, Savannah, after the game, I mean, she's a great player. Um, she can score all levels. And just being able to guard her and have to guard her and give her as much – 
hell as we could. I mean, she took great shots and she made a lot of tough baskets. I mean, that was one of the tougher guards that I've seen. And I think our guards did a great job trying to just keep her composed as much as we can. But you got to give kudos to her. Number four, she's, she's a great player. Scott Rabelais with the advocate. Uh, Flaugé, uh, Coach Starkey was on, half, on the radio after the game sitting by me, and he said, you've really grown in your knowledge of the game uh, in, in, your, in your time here. How much, what did you think you knew when you came here, and, and what do you think you know now and that has helped, helped your game and helped you be a better teammate and contributor to this team? Coming into college? Oh, I knew nothing. <laughs> I thought I knew something. And then I hit them going up and down with them college girls. And I said, oh, no, I got to slow it down. So my freshman year, like, me and Coach Starkey, I never missed a day of film with him. Like, he just teach me so much. And then some some point throughout this year, it kind of just clicked. Like, he was like, oh, that's what I'm supposed to do. Like, you know, just listening to scouting report. Um, I feel like, you know, when you kind of know what the player going to do, you can kind of make them do whatever. I, I kind of think, like, defensively from an offensive standpoint, like, what would I do? You know what I'm saying? And so, and then I use that with scouting report, listen to what he says, because Coach Starkey is just, he's brilliant with scouting report. So I just try to learn anything I can, like suck all the juice from him, because he knows a lot. Angel, in, the, uh, in that rally, you kicked it to Poa. Poa found Michaela in the corner, and she drained that three. Just the place got nuts. But just her poise and kind of needing her buckets here, you know, getting her going in the postseason. Yeah, I mean, as a freshman, like I said, this is her second game in the NCAA tournament. I know nerves are still high for her. Um, the crowd was going crazy, and I know trying to get it to my teammates as much as I can. I love getting assists. Like, I try to lead the team in assists as best as I can. And I told her uh, one time I kicked it to her, and I think she did a – one dribble step back, and I was like, I, I didn't get. The, I don't think I got the assist for that. <laughs> um, so I, I, I'm happy for Michaela and her confidence and being able to get hit shots, but also, also on the defensive end. Um, number 15 was going off in the first half, and just I don't. I think she contained her in the second half, and I don't think she let her score in the second half. Maybe once, but being able to have her guard and being able to play both ends of the floor is yes. something that's important for her. She's super aggressive. Um, she plays hard all 40 minutes, even when her shots aren't going in. Um, defensively, we know what we're going to get from Anissa and rebounding from Anissa. And she just makes tough shots on offense. Um, I mean, she's a, a matchup nightmare. And having to guard her in practice is tough. And I, will, I love having her on my team and wouldn't want to play against her just because everything that she brings to the table when it comes to rebounding and making shots and her versatility as well. So we like to try to go through Anissa as much as we can. And she just brings us a lot of confidence and energy. Uh, kind of playing off uh, Cobble's question earlier, but poise is a word that not just you two, but a lot of people have used uh, inside that locker room. Can you kind of walk us through some of the conversations uh, during the timeouts, you know, in the face when they're making runs and just how you've seen this team grow over the course of the year, just with that word poise? Yeah, I mean, sometimes we can get into the heat of a moment and, like, I could yell at Flaget, like, Flaget, like, but I, or or she'll yell at me or she'll yell at the team on Flaget. It's the way you say it. Like being able to hold each other accountable is something that I love about this team because nobody takes it personal. Being able to get on each other and just being able to correct each other and just even if it's tough coach, tough, tough player coaching, we will come on the sideline and be like, hey, that was my bad for saying it like that, but you know what yeah, I mean yeah. type stuff. So I think that's something that's different from our team. Like we're able to talk to each other and get on each other and not take it personal, which is cool. And one last question for the players with Michael up front. Yeah, Angel. Um, we know Flaget has nothing to do until the summer, but how important was it for you to advance and keep going here? It, it's fun. I mean, I couldn't hear at one point in the PMAC. I, I didn't hear the play calls. I couldn't hear what was going on, and it was so much fun. I mean, I love playing um, here at, at LSU and everything going on. It was so much fun, and now to be able to advance for my second year here, I, it's just amazing. I wish we could take this crowd and, and bring it everywhere Man. we go, but I know they're going to come to Albany, and I hope to see everybody in Albany. For that moment just right there, but towards the end of the game, can you just talk about the love for this team that you have, how special this group is, and just, you know, like they said, the, the accountability they have as a team together to be able to continue to move forward in this tournament? As you see, I coach a very shy team. <laughs> they're, they're very passive. I have to really get them going. Uh, no, um, they're fun. They're fun. Even when they're frustrated, they're fun. Um, they're ballers. And um, uh, I, I just, I'm blessed. And um, 
I'm happy for them. I'm happy for LSU. Uh, let me say this. There's so many times people take getting to a Sweet 16 for granted. Do you know how many coaches probably had never done that in their career? I've always, always acknowledged that it's hard to do. I thought our fans were outstanding today. They showed up at what? Three, what, what time do we play the other day? Three o'clock and then today at two o'clock. Um, yeah, those kids keep me young. Corey Diaz with the USA Today Sports Network. Kim, obviously not the start that you guys wanted today. Just wanted to ask if externally, if you guys felt like you maybe were distracted a touch and, and just talk about how your team was able to, to just weather that, that early start. No, listen, man, I'm not, we're not going to let one sleazy reporter distract us from what we're trying to do. Absolutely not. My kids didn't even know I said that yesterday. That team's not involved in this. They were in shock when they saw all that on the internet. I don't take that stuff to my team. All right, so there is a little recap of the ladies. Uh, big foe, Larger Johnson, Angel Reese. Is she going to come back along with Haley Reese? Or are they going to go to the next level, the WNBA? And Kim Mulkey, once again, has her team right where they want to be. They uh, will be uh, practicing this week and then making a trip up to Albany to that regional. Once again, playing UCLA at 12 o'clock. Iowa. Uh, is going to play Colorado. That is the five seed in this bracket, the team that opened up the season beating LSU. So a very tough regional. One other tidbit on the women. I think Aaliyah uh, Del Rosario is going to have to play some big minutes. If you look at UCLA and Iowa, they've got some post players. You've got to give Angel Reese and Anissa Morrow a little bit of help on the boards. We'll see if Del Rosario can come back. And last tier poor has been fantastic, has taken more charges than anybody on that team. Does a good job on defense and actually now shooting the basketball very well. So we wish Kim Mulkey and the Lady Tigers good luck as they head up to Albany for the regionals this weekend. Women's, uh, of course, uh, uh, Sweet 16 starts uh, and goes Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Of course, the men, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. How about the upsets? As uh, we all know, John Calipari fighting for his job. I'm hearing they're going to keep him one more year, but he's going to have to make some changes. And uh, as we know, Bruce Pearl and Auburn laid an egg. Uh, Tennessee and Alabama, the only men's teams left in the Sweet 16 for the March Madness on the men's side of the bracket. Quick timeout. We shift over to BK, Brian Kelly, year three. What are you fans expecting in year three? You're expecting 10 games or more because we hear it every day. Back on a Tuesday afternoon edition of Tigers Roar, right here with Buddy Sanji going solo. JP will be back next week, and we give you a little bit of Coach Brian Kelly when we come back on Tigers Roar. Tremonti's has meat. Tremonti's has seafood. Tremonti's has much more. Tailgating and home gating platters. Huge wine and liquor selection. Beer and all the spices you need. Chairman Reserve and Wagyu meats. Ribeye rolls, shrimp rolls, kebabs. 20 flavors of sausage for the grill. Daily lunch specials and game processing. On-site catering also available. Good meat ain't cheap and cheap meat ain't good. Visit Tremontese.com. Celebrate this holiday season with the gift of a new Honda during Happy Honda Days at Team Honda. And now you can make no payments for 90 days on our biggest selection of Hondas this year, making this the happiest time of the year. Come save now at Louisiana's number one Honda dealer, Team Honda. Caught spiders. Premier Pest Services. 
Few things in life are as valuable as family and peace of mind, especially when it comes to your final arrangements. And that's where Lee Serio can help. His prepaid funeral plans make sure your life will be remembered exactly the way you want it to. With Lee Serio, no detail is too large or too small. Call Lee or his wife Gretchen at 225-315-6329. Let Lee Serio give you and your family the peace of mind you all deserve. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. The winning play is the Buy Here, Sell Here event at the Team Automotive Group. Buy here and save on hundreds of certified and pre-owned vehicles. Or sell here and we'll pay you top value. Buy here or sell here and you'll be the winner at every location of the Team Automotive Group. Treads and Care Tire Company announces its new location on Hooper Road in Central. Locally owned for 50 years, Treads and Care is known for quality automotive repair with top-notch customer service. Treads and Care offers the convenience of shuttle service and pickup and delivery of your vehicle. You can also enjoy the comfortable customer area, complete with workstations, high-speed internet, and a complimentary coffee bar. I'd like to invite you to come out and see us at our new location in Central. Treads and Care, the tires you need and the service you want. Appreciate all of our sponsors here with us on a Tuesday. We change gears, and what are you Tiger fans expecting in year three? Six new coaches on Brian Kelly's staff, all five on the defense, along with Slade Nagel, who's coming over from Tulane to help with special teams and tight ends. Garrett Nussmeyer starting for the first time. Of course, he started in the bowl game. Uh, Joe Sloan and uh, Hankton going to be uh, co-coordinators. Joe Sloan calling the plays. It is a work in progress. Here is Brian Kelly giving you a little bit of an update after practice on Saturday as he met with the media out at LSU. Here's BK. Today, today was a busy day for us. Obviously, we had a... Um, um, a number of different opportunities for us to go against um, each other. Uh, I thought our guys did a really good job of, you know, controlling, um, you know, what they could control out there. I mean, you're you're, you're competing against each other for, in, in the instance I think today that the way it was scripted, you know, almost uh, 45 minutes of, um, you know, competitive work. I thought our guys really showed. Uh, you know, really good emotional uh, control and maturity in the way they competed today. So I was really pleased with that from a practice standpoint. And uh, we got a lot of work done. So the evaluation process for us will be really good. I mean, we'll have really good film to watch, to evaluate. Um, allows us now to, half, almost halfway done, really begin to, you know, look at, you know, where we have to strengthen ourselves, um, you know, the, the developmental issues that we need to continue to uh, work towards and, and be a more complete football team. So today was a, a really good day from that perspective. Um, you know, I think the identity is starting to kind of show itself. I think, you know, this is going to be much more that the sum is going to be greater than any one of the parts of this team. Um, which is great, you know. I mean, uh, I think that there's going to be a lot of players that will play, and and take an important role in the team. But we're going to need everybody. And so, to days like today, you know, as a head coach, you get an opportunity to kind of really good good sense of where your team is. And I think that that's what happened today. So, those are my opening comments, and take questions. Coach, with you know, Sage Ryan seems like maybe at the safety, and I guess Major would be playing the star. Is that right? Just kind of, how does the star shape what y'all can do in the secondary, or want to do in the secondary, and how is that those positions looking at this point in the spring? So it, the the star gives you a lot more, um, I would say, versatility within your defensive structure. Um, a guy that can play man coverage, a guy that can blitz, uh, a guy that can play zone coverage. Um, 
a really good tackler, athletic in space, um, but also, you know, a, a guy that's rugged enough that, you know, if you put a tight end, you know, he can, he can handle himself at the line of scrimmage. Now, if you're going to get into, you know, two tight ends, you know, you could move the star off the field and add another linebacker, you know, to the mix. But, you know, we felt like, you know, Major, you know, really fit that mold in terms of the star. He's closer to the football. Um, and, and he has those, those skills that we were looking for. Um, you know, Sage obviously is a guy that we moved around all over trying to find a spot for him. Um, you know, he's got speed, he's got athleticism. Um, obviously that was a position that, you know, um, you know needed some depth and, and he provides obviously that experience that, that was, was lacking at that position. Last year when you spoke of Malik, um, you spoke of like a seriousness or attention to detail that like he really used to elevate his game. Are you seeing something similar with Chris this year now that he's healthy? Um, I think, you know, the way that I would describe it is that, you know, those guys, you know, you know, when, when guys move on, it, it, it kind of, it thrusts you into, you know, that position of, um, need, leadership, whatever words you want to call. And he now knows that the mantle has been passed to him and it's his time. And I think he's really done a, an outstanding job of, you know, being the next wide receiver up at LSU. He's had a really good spring. He's been, you know, and I think I would evaluate him as somebody that has been consistent, you know, every day, He's gone out there and, and practiced at a high level, and he's developed a consistency at that position that I think at times maybe you could argue that he was, you know, lacked consistency, whether he was hurt or whether he would drop a ball. Um, we haven't seen any of that, and good for him. Um, I guess the, the edges are, are something that really has stuck out, too, in these first couple practices. Just how, how have you seen some of these defensive ends and, and guys progress um, just in terms of rushing the passer and getting and what you guys want to do with your defense this year? Well, again, I, I think, you know, the maturity level uh, of Deshaun Womack, um, the health of Deshaun Womack. Remember now, he was, you know, he wasn't part of spring and, and then, you know, had shoulder surgery and, and was coming off for shoulder surgery. And I just think in the weight room, um, physically developing, um, having a year to kind of understand what it takes to be in college has put him in a really good position. He's a, you know, he's got a chance to be an elite pass rusher. Um, you know, certainly we, we've seen um, what Braden Swenson can do uh, as a pass rusher. Um, both of those guys, we believe, can um, be top players at, at the edge position in, in the SEC. And, you know, clearly we're, we're moving big ends around as well. Uh, Savion is is doing a great job, but he's you know he's not necessarily uh, an edge as much as he's you know he's playing a little bit of a four technique, so he's a B gap player, but he's got great flexibility for us. He's long, he's athletic, and he can also play inside, so it gives us great flexibility when you have a guy like him as well. Hey, coach, um, Will Campbell and Emory Jones starting since they were freshmen. Now they're entering that that junior season where leadership really emerges. How, how good do you feel about having those two guys leading your team into this season? Yeah, so I think this is the year that we really put a lot more emphasis on them to be involved in um, our offensive structure in terms of schemes. Um, no longer is this about just, you know, um, we got two really good young tackles. We want to be able to take advantage of you know, their, their actual ability in the schemes. And you probably saw us moving them a lot more, pulling them, uh, getting them involved in our offensive structure a lot more. And so I think in year three, um, knowing that we have, you know, two outstanding tackles, let's get them involved in our run scheme. And so there's been a lot more pin and pull, a lot more outside zone, and, and that's to feature both of those guys in particular. Hey, Coach, over here. Um, it's 
what stood out today was the defensive backfield. They seem to be very active, and you've seen some a lot of the veterans and also the younger guys, such as uh, Deshaun McBride and P.J. Woodland, stand out. What do you? Uh, what? How do you see the defensive backfield moving forward, and what do they need to improve on? Yeah, I think we've got a lot of good young players there that you know are, are playing better and better. But you know, I think the guys that played for us last year are improving as well. You know, Toviano, um, Stamps. Um, I think that they're they're improving at the level that that is necessary for us. Um, you mentioned a couple of the freshmen. I just think there's a lot of good young talent. They're being coached. I think um, Coach Owen's doing a great job with the safeties. I think that they're very active and very much involved in what's going on. Um, I mean, Jarden Gilbert gives us a, a veteran player back there. So I think there's a nice collection of some veteran players, some younger players. Um, same thing at the cornerback position. Um, you know, I, I just I think it's just a – you know, a natural selection of uh, younger players and some guys with some experience that we finally have, as I said, I think the sum is going to be, um, you know, much more about what this team is than any one individual. I, I don't know that there's going to be one corner. I think it's going to be two or three corners at a particular position. Um, I don't know there's going to be one safety. I think it's going to be two or three. So I, I think you're going to just see a lot of guys that are going to be competing and, and helping us instead of, well, it's just one star at one position, one superstar. And I think that's a good thing. And there is Coach Brian Kelly. By the way, spring game will be April the 13th at 1 o'clock. It will be on the SC set. SEC Network Plus, a little thin at running back in the spring, but loaded at uh, wide receiver, loaded at offensive line, loaded at tight ends. Garrett Nussmeyer, a battle with A.J. Swan and Ricky Collins for the backup there. On the defensive side, where's the beef? Miss Clara is asking the question, where are those big, beefy, strong, uh, just – Great D tackles all through the years. Don't have them right now. Will they get some in the transfer portal? Harold Perkins moving inside a little bit, but uh, a lot of DBs and uh, with this new coaching staff, you will have a totally different mindset. They're going to disguise. They're going to blitz. They're going to be aggressive, and they're going to uh, play press man to man on the outside. Going to be a lot of fun, but right now still very much a work in progress for year three with Brian Kelly out at spring football. We come back and save the best for last, LSU baseball. Coming off a national championship, opening up the SEC schedule right now, two and four. They've gotten beat two out of three the last couple weekends and traveled to Arkansas, the number one team in the country, this Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Back to that, wrap it up with a little baseball on a Tuesday edition of Tigers Roar right here with Buddy Sanji. You can't smell it, but you can almost taste it. And whether it's for a family get-together or a game day feast, having Randa in the mix always sounds good. For three generations, their quality meats and original seasonings have made Manda a Louisiana legend and made their family sausage Louisiana's family sausage. Manda Fine Meats, the flavor says it all. Now's the best time to experience Mazda during the season of inspiration at Team Mazda. For a limited time, make no payments for 90 days on your new Mazda. That's right. Shop now, choose your new Mazda, and make no payments for 90 days at Baton Rouge's Mazda dealer, Team Mazda. Hello, guys. It's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After 5 Tuxedos. 
we have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent with nationwide buying power. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. And uh, we are wrapping it up on this Tuesday afternoon. You see me donning the sunglasses because uh, it's, um, it's been a little tough to, to watch, folks. Uh, LSU's batting average has now dipped to 291. Their ERA, which has been in the low to mid threes, is now over four at 404. LSU has hit 35 home runs. They've given up 20. But um, when you talk about what they lost, it's just not that easy. Paul Skeens, Dylan Cruz, Beloso, Duga, Trey Morgan, Braden Joubert, Riley Cooper, Ty Floyd. We could go on and on and on. It's a rebuild. It's a work in progress. And uh, now, as uh, most of you know, uh, lost two out of three to Mississippi State, got run ruled 15-5 to five on Sunday. Won the first game on Friday night, 6-1. Saturday, of course, at 6 o'clock, they had a 4-2 lead late. And uh, inexplicably, a strikeout, a ball in the dirt. It goes off of Malazzo's chest protector. Instead of going right in front of him and where he could throw the, the run out at first, it goes to the side, run scores, it's 4-3. They get a tying single. Uh, in the ninth, and uh, from 4-4, they invariably lose 6-4 on Saturday night. That was the second largest paid crowd ever at LSU baseball, but um, that um, was uh, problematic as they were not able to carry it on. Jack Caglione, who is um, probably going to be your SEC player of the year, he pitched, he also hits, and um, they uh, – they acted like they were at batting practice in the latter innings as after we turned over from women's basketball with that great win, baseball struggling to finish. So losing two of the three, they'll play tonight against Southeastern out at the box. Weather is cleared up, but the sunglasses are out because uh, you Tiger fans, baseball fans, expect uh, LSU to be great and get to Omaha every year a little early to make any uh, assumptions on where they will go in the postseason but now just the next three weekends in this tough stretch uh, at Arkansas who's number one they host Vandy who is number seven the following weekend and then go at Tennessee and that of course uh, being uh, the uh, so once again at uh, Arkansas this weekend, that's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Hosting Vandy, that's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then at the Fighting Tony Vitello's of Tennessee on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Let's roll some baseball highlights and see what we can uh, get you as fired up as we can be. Uh, look, um, we talked about the players that uh, have been, uh, uh, had to be replaced. And Luke Holman has just been fantastic on Friday night. Everybody knows that he's uh, only lost one game, but... Uh, he's had an ERA uh, for 0, zero for a long time, and, and of course, uh, as we know, uh, he has uh, locked in on the Friday night uh, starter and has been fantastic. Only lost the game for Mississippi State was fantastic with the 6-1 uh, win. Here is Josh Pearson with a big uh, hit into the left field corner. You can see the crowd is all fired up, uh, but some of the problems that Jay Johnson has had 
is, is that um, guys that were hot earlier in the year, like Stephen Milam and uh, Brady Neal, have uh, have gone uh, have gone south. What are you going to do with Paxton Kling in center field? He's uh, having some problems. Ethan Fry once again is, uh, and there you see Jay Johnson getting thrown out. And uh, I don't remember Coach Johnson. He explained it yesterday. There was a lot of smack talk between Jared Jones and Jack Caglione, and uh, they warned both benches. Well, once the Florida pitcher did it again. Uh, Jay Johnson thought that uh, it wasn't going to be a warning, it was going to be uh, an ejection, and that did not happen. Of course, he got uh, tossed. Uh, look, just like when Kim Mulkey gets a, a technical foul, you're doing that to get your team fired up, get your team motivated, and uh, Jay uh, did say that um, he will no longer be doing that. Uh, was very, very disappointed. Look, this baseball team, uh, is um, got a big uh, job to, to do, folks. Uh, all of you know the expectations of LSU baseball. I, I constantly tell people that um, you uh, probably have the most expectations year in and year out with LSU baseball. So they were uh, preseason uh, one or two. They were two even going into uh, last uh, weekend, now they're sitting at, uh, then they moved to five, now they're at eight. If they get swept at Arkansas, probably will be in the 11, 12, or 13 range. Don't give up on them just yet, but um, uh, it has uh, been a, uh, uh, of course, Nate Yeske's the new pitching coach, and they, they don't seem to have been on the same page. Uh, calling a lot of fastballs, and you don't have Paul Skeens in that 100, 101 mile an hour uh, heater. So um, uh, a work in progress there. Real quick, wrapping up the other topics. Gymnastics went to New Orleans and won the SEC for the first time in about five years. Haley Bryant is as good as it gets. She's uh, one of the greatest gymnasts of all times. They are number two ranked, and the Lady Tigers uh, are going to a regional in Arkansas. Softball started 24-0. Uh, started uh, along with that record of beating Ole Miss and then in inexplicably lost two games to uh, Ole Miss. They had uh, swept Kentucky on the road. Uh, they did come back to beat uh, Missouri in the final game this past weekend. So softball still hanging around in the top ten. But uh, as we know, people expecting and hoping that Beth Torina can get to OKC once again. Lot on your plate, ladies, guys, kids. Once again, have a great Easter week. Make sure that uh, the Easter Bunny is good to all of you kids. And as always, Jonathan Poche will join me when we come back next time. Hopefully, we'll be talking about LSU getting to the Final Four. Once again, Lady Tigers playing uh, UCLA in Albany at 12 o'clock. Iowa will play uh, right after against Colorado. So that is the big time bracket. Uh, and uh, as we all know, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be an interesting run. We'll talk more about the decisions that are going to have to be made with Angel and Haley Van Lip. Once again, appreciate A.T., Marty, and all the folks. Katie, everybody doing the job here. And uh, as always, enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your Easter Sunday holidays. And we'll do it again with my co-host, Jonathan Poche, next week right here on another edition of Tigers Roar. See you next week, everybody.